Did you know that the discovery for DNA was stolen? Yes, on the 28th of February 1953, two scientists who went by the name of Francis Crick and James Watson strolled into the Eagle Pub in Cambridge, announcing that they had just discovered the secret to life. These two men would go on to receive a Nobel Peace Prize for their discovery of DNA in 1962, going down in medical and scientific history forevermore. This would be an amazing story in itself, despite the fact that it wasn't true, because A, this event never happened, and two, that isn't quite the full story here. So today we're talking about a science beef here, folks. Get on your fisty cuffs, it's time to go for a brawl. Francis Crick and James Watson were important to the discovery of DNA. There is absolutely no denying that, but it wasn't entirely their discovery. This was even admitted by James Watson many years later, in which he admitted not only was there a team of people involved in the discovery of DNA, but his little movie moment in the Eagle Pub never happened. There's a few more people in this whole scientific equation that we need to take into account here. Alongside Watson and Crick at Cambridge, who were working on the structure of the haemoglobin, we also have Maurice Wilkins, a physicist from the King's College London, Linus Pauling at the California Institute of Technology, but perhaps more importantly was the work of Rosalind Franklin, a chemist and X-ray crystallographer. If that last one sounded a little bit different to you all, that's because this person, Rosalind, is one of those fabled women we talk about. Something which at that point in history, as you can probably imagine, if there was ever anything good done by a woman, it was, it was pretty much buried and overshadowed before it ever came to the light of day. We will explain why in just a moment. To set the record straight, DNA was actually discovered in 1869, but it took until 1943 before scientists realised that DNA was the genetic material in cells, and that it contained the code for life. If you know it's there, then years of studies would help you try and better understand this, break it down and know the structure of DNA and how it could be passed down genetically. It was known that despite working closely together, Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins didn't like each other. So much so that she was referred to being a difficult woman and was effectively pushed to one side. She might have been a difficult person to work with, I don't know, never met the lady. But what I will say, and this might have some importance, is that not only was she a woman, she was also a Jewish woman. So again, I'm not putting two and two together here, but if anybody had any prejudices, that could certainly play a part as well. Allegedly. May I remind you that pretty much everybody else involved were white Christian men. So, with that in mind, back to the imminent discovery of DNA, Rosalind Franklin took months to capture and photograph thousands of X-ray crystallography films on DNA. This would take note of different angles and try and focus to examine the DNA structure in minute and precise detail. She also worked alongside a student named Raymond Goslin, who took a particular photograph commonly referred to as Photo 51. Such work is worthy of praise, and this is what would likely be the key in discovering the structure of DNA. Thousands of points of data, hard empirical evidence to prove once and for all what this thing actually is. So we have all the pieces, we just need somebody to come along and put them all together. Wilkins, being the little dick he was, decided to show these pictures to his colleague Watson to basically look at all the structures of DNA. You might think that there's nothing wrong with this, seeing as though they're all scientists and they're all trying to achieve a greater knowledge and understanding. However, you have to bear in mind that at this point, these two were direct competitors, and there was certainly, as far as we know, no consent for this having happened. So when Watson looked at this further, he picked out one photograph in particular which was of great significance, that being photo 51. Watson would then go to Crick, and the two of them would then tell their bosses, and then the discovery was official, and basically despite all that, them claiming that they'd found it, the actual evidence to prove it wasn't theirs. Which is fine, I guess, provided proper credit was given. So what actually happened? On the 25th of April 1953, Watson and Crick published their DNA paper in the premier British science journal, Nature. The paper itself was more sensationalised and extravagant in the claims about the structure of DNA. Wilkins also had input into this as well. Despite the fact that Watson and Crick did this, they didn't steal the imaging from Rosalind. 
But did they know that it was her work that led to this in the first place? As a team effort, they all worked to discover the double helix. So why didn't she get recognition or was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize as well? Rosalind Franklin's imaging was referred to at the end of the paper in the dense data field section of the journal. Which again is fine, but the fact is that 99.9% .9 of readers would probably have tuned out by that point, never having actually got to the point of who actually obtained the photographs and, well, was integral to actually finding out how DNA is structured. The model they proposed was also being commonly referred to as the Watson and Crick's model. So, what happened when Rosalind found out that this was the case? Well, she didn't, as far as we're aware. She actually died shortly afterwards, so the fact that her evidence led to this discovery, she probably didn't even know about at the time. Look, it's easy to argue that in her role, given that she's not a molecular biologist, she maybe didn't have the same insights that someone like Watson had. So yes, looking at it in that lens, you can kind of see why people might think that Watson was integral to this and it was simply a fact that he had to be the one to discover it. However, don't feel all bad for Rosalind because she did go on to discover many other great scientific discoveries, such as the structure of the RNA virus, so even if she was not credited for the discovery of the double helix DNA, she was a brilliant scientist who would continue her pursuit of knowledge in other fields. She unfortunately died at the young age of 38 due to cancer that developed, likely from radiation exposure, which likely means that she likely never knew her data was being used in this discovery. The pure ridiculousness of this whole situation might have been avoided if perhaps A, maybe some permission was sought, and B, they were maybe a little bit more truthful and fair with how they actually presented this data and who was actually involved with it because it certainly doesn't sound like Rosalind had much input there. Or, you know what, saving all that, maybe if they just apologised. Which, as far as we're aware, they didn't. Ever. They of course had to justify this theft in some way, claiming on occasion that Wilkins was entitled to hand over the information due to the fact that the King's College had proprietary rights over her DNA data, which was actually false. But any port in a storm, I guess. The profession has moved on quite significantly since this whole thing happened, and the standards are a little bit more up to scratch now, but that still doesn't excuse what happened at the time. So yes, this is the Watson, Crick and Franklin model of double helix DNA. If you guys liked that video, here's another one just like it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.